um, just for those, a, a short grounding for those that aren't steeped in this already, uh, traditional 2D monolayer cell culture, think of cookies on a tray, on a, a baking sheet. Um, that's where they are. They can expand out a little bit side to side, but um, contrast that on the right with 3D culture where these cells are free to stretch out, interact with each other, interact with the scaffold, it's called, um, that's in between them all, and that's where a lot of the uh, science comes into play. Again, the main problems with 2D is that the cells can't expand in that third dimension and interact. Uh, they can't experience gravity the way that, uh, which turns out to be very important in the development of cells, uh, having these sort of mechanical cues such as gravity. And then limited communication or contact with other cells. And as a result, they're not relevant to human physiology. So when they're used to test new drug candidates, um, you know, coming through um, preclinical and then my checkout, okay. Um, this is compounded naturally with the choice of cells. Tra traditionally, they were uh, immortal cancer cells that mutate over time and become corrupted. So that's a compounding but related factor. And as a result, you get um, disastrous surprises in phase two, phase three clinical trials um, that are um, very painful for big pharma. Um, and so they're in, uh, increasingly encouraged. And um, I understand I'm actually just completing a revision of the in vitro tox report now, uh, and I'm finding some of this to be the, the case is that pharma has gone beyond embracing uh, tox. It used to be more of a reactive check the box kind of activity. It's now much more a strategic operations um, resource and a skill that custom that um, pharma companies are emphasizing. Um, 